Hello Booktube, and Hello AuthorTube. There's an, uh, a creation here of J.D. Estrada, a writer on AuthorTube, uh, called March of the Writers. There's a series of uh, writerly prompts for the, the whole month of March designed to uh, introduce all AuthorTube writers to each other to f in, enhance a sense of community. Uh, and I uh, learned about it late, so I did a bunch. I did the first, like, nine or ten all in one video. And I planned on doing one a day after that, but I missed a day yesterday. <laughs> so we're going to do two today. Uh, and I will leave a list of these down below because I, I urge all of AuthorTube to join in. These are these are just fantastic. Make a Just make a, you know, a big video or do a bunch of videos and make a playlist. And get to learn all about the people on AuthorTube. So we are up to questions 11 and 12. Uh, and question 11 is a little touchy. Now, it wasn't when JD made it, but that's how fast the world can change. Uh, question 11 is upcoming events. Will you be at an event with your books? Are you going to a writer workshop or retreat? Meeting your favorite author? Share the wealth. And how much, good Lord, how much does that feel like a question from another era? We are finally awareness of the coronavirus that is sweeping the world finally has penetrated into the American zeitgeist and to a bunch of other complacent Western zeitgeists. Finally, people are starting to realize that if they don't change their behavior, they're running a huge risk, uh, not just for themselves, but for the old and immunocompromised people that they know and love. And those changes in behavior are very simple. They're very straightforward. They've been true since Athens, 5th century Athens. Stay away from other people stay home. Rigorous physical hygiene. Keep yourself washed. Don't touch your eyes. Don't put your hands inside your mouth for any reason. Uh, steam clean your hands as often as you can, especially after you've had contact with anything in the outside world. Uh, green screen your friends when you've got people coming over. Make sure. Question them. Where have you been? Who have you been with? And deny them access. If if the questions set off any alarm bells. Don't just keep blundering forward. That is that that kind of momentum, the, the foremost thing here being social distancing, as it's now called. Uh, that phrase has now entered the popular imagination of social distancing. Stay away from people. A maximum distance, a, a minimum distance of two, of two meters when you're on public transportation. No crowded events, no press of people, anything like that. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Just avoid it until the coast is clear. Uh, and so in, in terms of JD's question, authors are canceling signing events left and right. Writing conferences are being canceled left and right. Classes, even at, uh, at ordinary academic writing workshops, are being canceled. Students, universities are clearing out their students, clearing out their faculty, because it's a breeding ground for, for this kind of thing. And the last thing a university wants is the user, a university provost, the last thing that they want is to wake up tomorrow morning to reports from all of their heads, their department heads, that this disease is, this virus is sweeping through the campus. No, you don't want that. Get the students out. Get them out of off campus. Get them to stop. Students cram together in subterranean drinking halls. Commingling with each other. No, 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 no. You want to get rid of all of the drinking parties? No. Clear out fraternity and sorority row. Get rid of, get, send the students on their way. Pe send them packing. And the same thing is true with all sorts of other things, too. I'm wondering how long it will be. Uh, I mean, all of those things are good, but they are, they are comparable or, or smaller than some of the bigger risks. We saw the, uh, the NBA cancel their season. But what about the baseball season? Will, will Major League Baseball cancel? Will they just decide to take it on the chin? Uh, they should. Otherwise, they're going to be packing tens of thousands of people into auditoriums. And sometimes in inclement weather. And sometimes, you know, you've got the great-grandpa who wants to see one last Cubs game. So he's going to go when he has no immune system. And he's all of a sudden surrounded by 10,000 vectors of this disease. That, that should be a no-brainer. Politicians, including the current president of the United States, should cancel rallies. Uh, they, they don't make any sense anymore. They're actively dangerous. Every epidemiologist in the world would say that. And how much of a step is it from there to telling businesses to shutter? Bookstores. How long will bookstores be open? Uh, it's, books, bookstores aren't exactly grocery stores, right? As much as we might howl <laughs> here on BookTube and AuthorTube, they are inessential. And people gather there. And they share food and drink there. 
Uh, so the answer, I mean, I can answer JD's question in two ways. One, I can answer it in, in the way that is unfair because he didn't know it was coming when he wrote the question, which is, of course, nobody's doing any of these things anymore. Or if they are, they're stupid. They shouldn't be doing it. Authors shouldn't be risking it. Readers shouldn't be risking it, even to meet Hillary Mantel. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for three weeks in intensive care. Three weeks in intensive care. Do you have any idea? If you're in America, do you have any idea how much that will cost you? Even if you have insurance? Uh, but uh, if, I, if I answer the question as it was asked in the earlier, in the idyllic uh, pre-lapsarian day in which J.D. wrote the question, uh, this is still not a thing that I ever really did. To, I know there are a lot of booktubers who have who have done that, and I love watching those things on their channel. The the experience of Russell at Ink and Paper Blog, uh, and uh, uh, lots of other people who who make made regular practice out of going and finding reading events, going to readings, meeting authors, shaking their hands, uh, getting awkward moments with them, <laughs> hearing hearing stories. I did that sort of thing from behind the table when I worked. I worked in bookstores for a very long time, and every time. We had an author come in. The managers would always come take me aside and say, I think you're the only one here who's read their book, who's read anything about them, who's read any of their previous books. I, I'm, I'm just going to be standing here like a bump on a pickle if, if I have to keep this author occupied for an hour. Is there any chance that you could stand and talk with this author in between people? Because most author events don't draw a crowd. Most of the time the author's just sitting there staring or answering questions about where the bathroom is. <laughs> and I always volunteered. I was always happy to do that. I said, absolutely, I've read this author. I can't wait to meet them. And that often resulted in long conversations between the author and me. Uh, but I did that because I was working at the bookstore and I wanted the event to do well. I, I, I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of times I've gone to such events when I wasn't working in a bookstore and mostly it was because I was dragged to them by, by friends of mine. Uh, so in, in the answer, the, the earlier answer to JD's question is I would, I would, I have very little in the way of a store of anecdotes when it comes to that. Cause it was never any appeal to me. What do I care with that? Now I'm even, I'm even, if we weren't quarantined or heading towards quarantine, uh, I would still be reluctant because you did, you know, if you're a critic, then how much do you want to meet these people? I, what if, what if I met an author who's absolutely wretched and I like them? <laughs> and then what happens? And there, there's ample on my bookcase about books and reviewing. There are ample stories of reviewers going back centuries who face that dilemma. What am I going to do? I like this author now. <laughs> how, how am I going to pan this next book? But the book deserves a pan. It's terrible. Uh, there are quite a few uh, reviewers in the, in the 21st century who have avoided that problem by avoiding the socializing. They just didn't do it or don't do it. Uh, so I don't know. I, I probably would never have been much for doing this anyway. Uh, and then question number 12, prompt number 12. I'll do these two today to catch up, and then I'll do, I'll do 13 and on tomorrow, hopefully one a day. And I urge, again, I urge all of you writers to do this as well. These are great fun. And then they don't take, it's just you uh, talking about your preferences. Uh, and that's what 13 is. Uh, no, 12 is creature comforts. Uh, what are the things that make your life and your writing easier and more comfortable? Uh and when it comes to when it comes to making my life more comfortable, <laughs> that is easy. That is this. And you probably need to see this face anyway, don't you? Considering how horrible the news is. That is this. This is my bean. There are many like it. But this one is mine. <laughs> that is Frida. She is a three-year-old miniature schnauzer and uh, those of you who have been watching this channel for a long time will know that I love dogs. I always have dogs in my life, and uh, right now I have only one. And she's not a hound. <laughs> she's not a beagle. She's, she's something else entirely, and I love her. Absolutely love her. Her personality, her great company. She is a source of comfort for me, just in life. Uh, but when it comes to writing, this is a good one. A lot of the prompts here are good as prompts for Steve Rance about writing. I have a lot, I have a lot of things about your writing habits that I don't like. <laughs> so, so aren't you glad you clicked on this video? And the point I want to make here about writerly comforts, I want to... Uh, oh, no, baby, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> she, spotted, she spotted one of those tasseled bookmarks <laughs> that I was talking about earlier today, and she wants to eat it. But the camera, the tripod, is resting on the book that it's in, so she would that would cause a disaster. Uh, uh, I often rail against writer comforts, because a lot of writers, and I know, especially young writers, have a long list of such comforts that they absolutely need. I need my cushion. I need my time of day. I need 
my level of quiet. I need the right music. I need the right tea. I need the right snack, and it's got to be right, right within reach. And I rail against that sort of stuff because I have known many, many young writers who said they needed those things and let that progress to the point where they couldn't write without them. But of course, you can write without them. You can write without anything. All you need is a means of writing. That's all. You don't need anything else to be true in order to write. And those things aren't a function of writing. And so the rant that I have often given to young writers is draw a distinction between necessity and comfort. Nothing wrong with comfort, but one of the things that I like to stress to people is that you shouldn't be fighting with your surroundings when you're writing. And you should take a long, quiet minute on the clock ahead of time, before you start writing for the day, to make sure that you are not even thinking about your surroundings, much less fighting with them. I have seen so many cases where somebody will open up a laptop or it was a pad of paper and they'll be... <laughs> They'll be sort of jostling it on a pillow, or they'll they'll be like that, but they'll have to reach over like this for something that they need, over like this. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't organize your space so that it's not fighting against what you're doing. That applies to anything, but it definitely applies to writing, because writing is an uphill battle as it is. So if you have a desk and you think, well, this is where I should write because this is my writing desk, but it's intensely uncomfortable or distracting or draughty or drafty or or whatever, change it. Don't fight with it. If you fight with it, that's going to that's going to be a drug on the system for everything that you're doing. I encounter this myself uh, when I'm writing. Well, I write either here uh, in the little book room or out on the couch. I got I have pillows. I have a laptop, a Chrome laptop. It's very light, so it's got to be positioned exactly right. I don't want to be typing on it when it's positioned on a pillow or on a, on a platform such that. It's con the, so that the keyboard is constantly wanting to edge up. The whole thing is wanting to slide in one direction. No. Take a moment to set up your surroundings so that they aren't fighting you. So that the keyboard just sits under your hand. So you don't have to think about it. Set up your surroundings so that right there at your hand, not this, <laughs> right there at your hand is whatever you need. Whether it's a nautical manual or a historical atlas or whatever. Have it right there. <laughs> right there and the reason why that will be easy is because you will if you'll have that spot open if you banish stupid things like drink and food which are distractions <laughs> they don't help the writing at all some of you will say they do but i disagree uh and i think i can prove it by the amount of writing you do one way or the other uh but that that is my answer to question number what was it 12 yeah creature comforts is uh there's a difference between uh wants and needs and one of the needs you have for writing is definitely to make sure that your tools for writing are working for you instead of against you. So if there's a power cord to your laptop, don't have it in an awkward position. Set everything up so that you don't have to think about it. Because you have plenty of other stuff to think about. You have writing to think about. Uh, so that's my, that's my answer to uh, question number 13, creature comforts. They are extremely abused by young writers that I know. The whole concept of them is. And they're abused, and the idea of what is necessary is often overlooked. So that I'll, I'll see people doing this for a glass of water that's over here, has to travel over the keyboard, when it shouldn't be there at all. And if it is going to be there, if you absolutely need to hydrate, it should be here. So there's none of this, or this, or anything like that. Do you see what I mean? Those little ergonomic details make a big difference cumulatively. So that's my rant on the subject. And I'm going to continue on with the, with the March of the Writers tomorrow, I hope. Uh, so I will, I will wrap this up, and I will see you then. Thank you, BookTube.